everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm the Code Pilot. In this episode, we're going to be looking at sprite sheets and blitting individual cells to the display surface. But before we get into coding, let's first have a look at what the script will do and what sprite sheets are. So we'll start with what happens when we run the script. Here you can see individual sprites being blitted to the display surface. So what is a sprite sheet? Well, I'll show you a couple of diagrams and talk you through it. To put it basically, a sprite sheet is a collection of images within a single image file. And the objective of this script is to be able to blit sections of that sprite sheet onto the display surface. And now I think you're about ready to see some code. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the frame rate from 120 frames per second to 1 frame per second, which should allow us to see the changing cells as we blit them to the display surface. So now what we need to do is create a sprite sheet class and then create an initialization function with three parameters. These are file name, columns, and rows. The file name contains the path and the file name of the image file containing all of our sprites. And columns is the number of sprites horizontally and rows is the number of sprites vertically. The first thing we're going to do in our initialization function is to load the image and store it in sheet. The sprite sheet I'm using in this video is available to download from my Google Drive. And at this point, I've got to apologize. I didn't put convert alpha at the end of this image load function. To understand why this is important, check out the video in the link above. So the next things we need to do are to store the columns and row variables in this instance of the sprite sheet. And also, we need to get the total number of cells by multiplying the columns by the rows. And we'll store that in total cell count. And now we need to get the width and height of the sprite sheet in pixels and use that to determine the width and height of each cell within the sprite sheet. And we do this by calling the get rec function, which is callable from any instance of a surface. What it returns is the width and the height and also the width and height divided by two in an array called center. What we're interested in is the width and the height of the sprite sheet. That's because we need to calculate the width and the height of the cells. The Rainbow Island sprite sheet that we're using has a width of 336 pixels and also a height of 192 pixels. So to get the width of the cell, we divide 336 by the number of columns, which is 48. And to get the height of the cell, we divide 192 by the number of rows, which is also 48, making each cell in the sprite sheet a square. So going back to the code, we'll store the cell width in a local variable called w and also within the instance of the sprite sheet with the name cell width. And here we are, we get the width from the rect variable that we created before and divide that by columns and to go with it a local variable called h which will store the cell height and the cell height variable within the instance itself. And to do this, we divide the sprite sheet's height by the number of rows. And we'll also create some local variables which store half the width and half the height of the cell. And just in case we need them later, we'll also store them in the instance of the sprite sheet. So the next section is going to be building a list of cells. And what this is, is a list of rectangles, which represents each cell within the sprite sheet. Now, if you remember, the blit function allows us to display a portion of an image to the display surface, but we have to define that within a rectangle. In the blit function, it's called area. And if we go over to the Pygame documentation website, we can see it highlighted here. By default, it's set to none. So let's have a look at how we're going to build this list. Every cell in the sprite sheet is referenceable by an index number. So to show you how those index numbers stack up, we'll lay the index numbers over the cells. So if we wanted the character standing and looking left, we'd just blit index number zero. If we wanted the character walking left, we'd use one to four. So back to the code. 
we're going to use a for loop to generate our list of rectangles. And we're going to place that for loop within the list function. Here you can see a variable called index. This represents a range from zero to the total number of cells within the sprite sheet. We have to somehow convert that index number into an x and y coordinate to represent the rectangle. And to show you how this is done, we'll nip over to the Python IDE interface where I can show you some code output. So first things first, we're going to create some variables which represent the columns and rows as if we were using the Rainbow Islands character sprite sheet. So we should now have C is the columns, R is the rows, and total is column times rows. And you can see that the total is 28 cells. So this for loop is the same for loop that will be in the list function, and I is representative of the index. So using the modus operator, we're going to return the remainder of dividing index by the number of columns in the sprite sheet. So what's returned here is a list of numbers from 0 to 6 four times. And we can use that value to represent the x coordinate when we're building our list of rectangles. In this next print, we're going to do the same, but we're also going to divide the index by the number of columns as well. So dividing the index number by the number of columns in our sprite sheet, it gives us a list of rows. And we can use that list to represent the y coordinate in our list of rectangles. We know that the sprite sheet's made up of pixels, and what's returned from those calculations are rows and columns. So in order to represent pixels, we need to scale up those numbers. And to do that, we need to multiply those calculations by the width and height of the cell in pixels. And as the cells in our sprite sheet are square, the width and height are the same, 48 pixels. So multiply these values by 48, and we'll get an accurate X and Y offset of each cell in the sprite sheet. As you can see at the top of that list, the first cell is at 0, 0. The second one is at 48, 0. And the last one in the list has an x-coordinate of 288 and a y-coordinate of 144. So let's now go on to build the list in full. A rectangle in Pygame consists of an x and y coordinate plus a width and height. So we need to include those values when we're building our rectangle list. The first part of this print just displays the index number as we go through the for loop. The highlighted section shows the complete construction of the rectangle as we go through the for loop. So what the output will show is that for every cell in the sprite sheet, there is a rectangle that is referenceable by an index number. So back at the code, we can now complete this line because we understand what it does. The next line creates a list of handles and a handle is basically an offset to the X and Y coordinate. Let me show you what I mean with these diagrams. When we blip to a surface, the image is laid so that the top left corner is over the X and Y coordinate, like you can see here. Where the green dotted line intersects is the X and Y location. We can adjust the position of the image relative to the X and Y coordinate by adding an offset. For instance, if we wanted to blip the image centralized to the X and Y position, then we need to deduct half of the image's width and height from those coordinates. In our sprite sheet class, we'll create a list of offsets that are accessible via an index as shown here by the green arrow. Each index in the list uses either the cell's width or half width and height or half height to offset the image relative to the X and Y coordinate. Let's go through the list and see the offsets in action. Here you can see index 4 will centralize the image over the x and y coordinate. So back at the script you can see that I've already typed up the list of offsets as it's a long and tedious process and I don't want you getting bored if you're not already. <laughs> The next function in our class is called draw, and that basically draws to a surface that we provide in the parameters. The cell index parameter points to an item within the list of rectangles we created earlier. 
The X and Y indicate the position on the surface we're going to blitz. And handle is the index used to look up offset values within the handles list. If the offset parameter is omitted, then the default handle index value will be zero. So here we're using the surfaces built in blitz function. And if you remember, sheet was where we stored the image when we used Pygame's image load. The next parameters are the X and Y coordinates. As you can see here, we're deducting the offset from the handles list using the variable called handle as the index. I definitely should have used better names, I think. And the same for the Y coordinate. Remember, if handle is zero, then the offset values are zero. If the handle is four, then the image is centralized. The next parameter of the blip function requires a rectangle and we'll supply that using the cells list we created in the initialization of the sprite sheet class and index that using the cell index variable. As mentioned before, this cuts out a rectangular section of the sprite sheet and uses that to display on the surface. And that's the end of the sprite sheet class. So let's now go create an instance of the sprite sheet class. So we'll start off with a variable called s and we'll assign the sprite sheet to that. We're going to be using the Rainbow Islands character sprite sheet, which will be included in my Google Drive, by the way, if you want to download that. And we're going to pass the number of columns and the number of rows in our sprite sheet. Then we're going to create a variable that easily represents index number four in the handle list. And if you remember, that centralizes the image over the X and Y coordinates. The purpose of the script is to cycle through all the cells in the sprite sheet. So we'll use index to reference those cells. So in the next line, we'll use the sprite sheet's draw function to write each individual cell to the display surface using the index. Now, we're going to increment the index by one on each cycle of the main loop. And to make sure the index doesn't go over the total number of cells, we'll use the modus operator to contain the index within zero and the total cell count. We'll also blit the image to the center of the display surface. We're going to next create a circle in the center of the display surface so we can see where the X and Y coordinates are. So now that we've done that, it's the end of the script. Let's go over to the command prompt and run, see what happens. Well, we've got an error and it says sprite sheet instant has no attribute draw. Now I know what the problem is here. What I've done is I've defined the draw function within the initialization function of the sprite sheet. All I need to do is change the tab order. So where it says def draw, I just need to remove one of those tabs from that line and the one below it. So let's just go up to those lines there. So that's it, remove those tabs and let's go back and run it again. Hey, it works, fantastic. As you can see, we cycle through each of the cells in the sprite sheet and display it in the center of the display surface. And as we're running at one frame per second, that's why it's going that slowly. Obviously you can change that and it'll go faster. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I have making. And don't forget all the scripts are available on my Google Drive. Just go over to the link, which will be in the description and leave a comment. Whether it's good or bad, i just like to know that there is actually a human being watching. Anyway, see you for the next one. Take care.